Hey guys, what's up? Aru. We all know that dreams in Genshin Impact are kind of the main aspect of Sumeru. You've got this dude, these guys, that kid, that thing, and everything else in between wanting to find the definition of the word Amimir. But why, I ask you, are dreams so important to everyone in Sumeru? How come everybody wants to go to sleep? And even me. Well, this video is going to answer that question that no one has asked ever. The motivations behind why they use dreams and the end goal very different from each group groups, as well as the definitions of what dreams are to every membering side. Honestly, I just wanted to talk about what dreams mean to Sumeru and how different it is from everyone else in Teyvat, along with how or why they use or don't use dreams based on their own values. This video is gonna focus on the people of Sumeru's view, the Academia's view, as well as the Fatui's, the Aranara, and the Dendro Archon, which includes both Kusanali and Ruka Devara's perspective on dreams. How each of these groups would use or already use the aspect of dreaming and how they see dreams with their own respective sides. Timestamps, as always, will be in the description below. With all that said, let's get started. The quickest way to get you to grips with what dreams are is the Samsara. So let's talk about the Samsara phenomenon in Sumeru City. The word samsara means the indefinite repeated cycles of rebirth, misery, and death caused by karma. This definition paired with the phenomenon we experienced shows how good dreams applied to a large population can be, an endless repetition of the day of the Subzerus festival. The entire population of Sumeru city and is conducted by the governing branch of Sumeru. All this is done without the people of Sumeru knowing. Even if you find out that you are in a samsara, you will still repeat the same day within another dream and lose the memory that you had prior. If an entire city in real life would have this sort of experimentation happen, theoretically, anyone caught within the radius of that event is basically doomed. I mean, we're not all as good as the Traveler when it comes to willpower and deduction, of course. Even Dea, a vision holder, lost her memory and wasn't able to recall what she found out before. If anything, the best an experienced vision holder can achieve within a samsara is to sense the presence of other beings. Evidently though, Dea did not notice the presence of Nahida. And the only way for you to be relatively conscious of your dreams and what's happening is to receive the blessing of the Dendro Archon from the Statues of the Seven. But I'm not saying that the Traveler and Paimon are the only ones who can break free from a Samsara or a dream fabrication because we've seen non-vision holders experience and go through dreams on a daily basis and know that they are in a dream, as well as certain beings and deities that use dreams in a broader spectrum, as well as using them in a much more dangerous and lethal way, only if they have to. The Fatui's goal can be as simple as the Tore wanting to burn Ermensol, but the Tore's viewpoint when it comes down to dreams, if we base it off of the Dragon Records, Trophin, and the Time of Insight, then he plans to grab as many Aranara and children along with Arlecchino, to harness and finally weaponize it using Aranara along with finding its deeper meanings, especially understanding the withering and how to make their own form of withering from it. And finally, ascend the human and mortal conventions. You can see exactly what the Fatui want with dreams and Aranara and the withering, and many of what we know from the Fatui since 1.0 is all about weaponizing certain things and beings to further their own goals. Like I said, their goals regarding dreams and why they are in Sumeru is as simple as burning the urban soul tree. If the Academia or the Tore and the Fatui find the key to dreams and be able to use Aranara as well as the Dendro Archon's abilities, then it's basically game over for everyone in Teyvat. You might think, well, why wouldn't the Aranara and the Dendro Archon just use their powers with dreams and just fix Sumeru? Well, the only reason Aranara don't use dreams for conquest is that they use it to protect their Aranara friends as well as their Rana human friends. They prefer to savor and enjoy the happier side of dreams and memories, which is to spend those memories with friends and stories of the memories they had through the forest by becoming seeds and telling it to the newer generation of Aranara. Kusanali, on the other hand, is only after dreams because she herself appreciates how beautiful dreams are and how complex and wonderful people's willpowers can be. Sadly, that's not how the academia, the Fatui, and how most of humanity see dreams. How they see dreams is a chance to monopolize and make full use of those in any possible aspect. 
Well, I guess that's just how humans are. Never content and always wanting more of what they are given. But there are those who are after something else. Not just knowledge, not just military and civil potentials of dreams, but are after insight and wisdom, which is also found in the academia and is the reason why people of Sumeru don't dream. Dreams in Sumeru are kind of complicated to explain, simply because of how convoluted dreams already are. Dreams to the people of Sumeru are a way for them to gain knowledge, along with it being the only way to connect with the Ermin Soul Tree. Plus the fact that certain individuals can be aware that they are dreaming, control one's dream as well as other people's dreams, and finally lock someone into dreaming involuntarily. The one takeaway here is that Ermensol is a key factor when it comes to dreams and separately obtaining knowledge. Well, if you're into that sort of hobby. And the closer you are to attuning yourself with Ermensol, the more vulnerable you are to losing your sanity. This is where a few who can understand dreams come in, and a lot of them are within the Tawahist branch of the academia. Tawahist, TLDR, is a branch responsible for the study of illumination and the stars, using an elephant which I think symbolizes their great memory and overall big brain power. Key characters within the Tawahis branch are the Grand Sage, which if you put it together is most likely why the Samsara is so good and powerful, and we also have Hypatia, if you can still remember her. As one of the Tawahis scholars, she is going through a phase in her study of dreams called the Satyavada life and is trying to ascend to the Paripurna life. Both of these terms are found in Hindu religion, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Satyavada means truthful speech, which is the cause and condition of rebirth among gods. It is, from what I understand, what you need to go through before you can be reborn, which is exactly what Hypatia is doing. She says specifically that she needs to ascend from Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life to gain deeper insight from the Ermensol and find the meaning behind Rukha Devara's final words. Paripurna means whole or complete in Hindi, and in Hindu religion, Paripurna is an aspect of God or the highest self as perfection. Hindu gods related to this are Vishnu, specifically Krishna, which is the eighth avatar and the supreme form of Vishnu known as Paripurna Avatara. So yeah, dreams and Sumero kinda wild in right now. Something interesting though is that all this hype about dreams being delusions and Sumero not dreaming came up after Ruka Devara's death. And Kusanali even states that dreams are filled with bundles of wisdom and imagination. Meaning dreams used to be normal in the land of wisdom until, well, the academia turned it into the land of knowledge. Dreams to humans are often known as those weird events that happen in our brain when we sleep. But to our Anara, dreams are interchangeable with memories. And so is sleeping interchangeable with hibernation. Our Anara don't really sleep and therefore don't technically dream. To Aranara, dreams are memories that are forever kept, given, and told all throughout the rainforest. The land of dreams, or Banarana, is what you see in the real world. Banarana roughly means depth of the forest. But after playing your little harp to the Selapna, or what is called a dream stone, you are then transported to a different yet same Banarana, but this time it's called the Maha Banaranapna, meaning the forest depth of great dreams, which is technically the real land of dreams, as stated by Arama. So when Aranara are seen in the real world and move to the land of dreams, they sort of phase between two different realities. You can describe these two worlds as the dream state and the real state. You might ask, Aru, how does the dream world exist and how come they can enter every dream? Well, Timmy, remember that huge onion where we give Dendroculus to? Yeah, well, there's an identical huge onion that you can find within each dream that you enter. That's called the first Ashvata's tree of dreams. And it's what holds dreams together and keeps the dream state stable. The word first Ashvata. Now, the word Ashvata was mentioned near the end of the Aranara questline and is all about beating Marana's avatar and planting a new Ashvata seed to get the bija, or bij, which means seed, 
and save Rana. And the first Ajvata's Tree of Dreams is what holds together the Mahavana Ratna and every other dream in the Dream State Stable. You follow me? Okay, good. The Ashvata is a sacred tree in Hinduism and is the same species of tree as the Bodhi tree, which I mentioned in my other Sumeru video for 3.0 released. Now, the Bodhi tree or the Ashvata or what humans call the Gaukarana in human context is equivalent to the ermine soul tree, which I theorize that Rukadevata became or at least went to in order to save the forest. Rukadevata is also the queen of the Aranara, more commonly known as Aranyani. In my honest opinion, the Dendro Archon or God of Wisdom is the most powerful being in Tevat, but we'll talk about that later. Now, the only context we have about the Dendro Archon using dreams in Genshin is that the quote-unquote Dendro Archon talked with certain individuals through dreams. One example is with the first sage who was given all the knowledge in Teyvat. The other is Dunyarzad's dream where Kusanali spoke to her while she was just a child. Finally, Kali's dream, which I can only theorize is a vision given to her by showing her possibly the future of Ermansol and Sumeru. Kusanali specifically said that she can theoretically enter anyone's mind as long as they wear the Akasha terminal, and that she is the first terminal of the Akasha, but only chose Catherine for the fact that she was a bionic Snaznayan puppet and possessed no free will. So that means she can technically possess other people too. But whether or not she can control more than one person at the same time or enter multiple people's dreams simultaneously is still up to speculation. But if she can, then theoretically she can control all of Sumeru and mess with everyone's dreams and consciousness. However, dreams within Sumeru aren't the only places she can enter. She can also speak with you through the Golden Apple Archipelago, which I theorize is the so-called Gate of Dreams that Fischl spoke of. If you don't believe me, then you can tell me whether or not this is Alice being cute or if it is actually Kusanali speaking. Take a listen. Ah, oh, it's you. You're right, we've never met before. The fantastic mirage represents the deep dream, the most fundamental reflection of the human heart. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'm just a little bird that sometimes flies by these islands, and am now watching you from far, far away. I just so happen to sense power here that has something to do with me. I was curious, so I landed on the beach to quietly watch everything that took place on these islands. And then all of you arrived later on, bringing your glorious dreamscapes and wonderful willpower. Your dreams are like the pure and delicate bubbles floating on the water. The more beautiful the illusion, the more it fascinates me. I'm not able to travel myself, but I do admire free spirits like yourself. So, I helped them design a little something for you all. As I said, I don't have an agenda. I'm just a little bird. I stopped here to admire your lives, joys, sorrows, and all. You are a special person with a unique and brilliant glow. I decided to communicate with you in this way because I'm really curious about you. There's no need to wonder about my name. Maybe one day in the future, we will meet in another place. The entity speaking to you directly is similar to how Dunyarzad's dreams went, and the entity specifically said that she was very fascinated with everyone in the island's dreams and willpower. So maybe the Golden Apple Archipelago could be some sort of gate between dreams and reality. Hence why you can go there physically, but can also create your own fabricated realities like in dreams. With this in mind, Kusanali is not only able to enter Sumeru people's dreams, but people outside of Sumeru as well, as long as they are within the realm of dreams or dreamscapes. Similar to how Aranara can enter dreams and keep them stable using the Ashvata tree's dream, maybe Kusanali and Rukadevata can enter any person in Teyvat's own dream using the Ermin Soul tree. And maybe she can communicate with other archons through dreams too. If this is possible, then she is basically Elon Musk using Starlink all over the world. She calls herself a little bird who flies by the archipelago. If by little bird she meant that she can fly around Teva through dreams, then dreams aren't just simple fabrications of imagination after all. But in my opinion, using dreams like Starlink isn't what makes the Dendro Archon OP. Apart from possibly being able to see basically anyone's dreams, communicate with them through dreams, and even take hold of their consciousness, I hazard a guess that Ruka Devata and 
Kusanali have the power to store memories of untold millennia and be a walking archive of unknown knowledge. Inari's voice line about Kusanali says, Plants and the land of Dendro share the same history. Now, if you played through the RNR questline and read quite a bit of it, then this statement does hold a deeper meaning. Aranara share a deep connection with their queen, Aranyani, or Ruka Devata. Aranara's memories and therefore history is etched within the forest. And so is Ruka Devata's memory after sacrificing herself and becoming one with the Gaokarana or Tree of Life, which is, in Genshin's context, the Ermin Soul Tree. Putting this all together, the land of Dendro's history is etched within the plants and forests of Sumeru, and is the key to finding out what exactly happened before Ruka Devara died. However, because the people of Sumeru can't dream, and because the Akasha Terminal is feeding on it, and giving it to the Akasha or the Academia to use, the Academia and most of the people of Sumeru won't be able to see Aranara and therefore won't really know the history of Sumeru. The Academia, allegedly saying that dreams are delusions that hinder one from gaining knowledge, is wildly opposite of Rupa Devata and Kusanali as well as the Aranara which all stick to memories and dreams to gain wisdom, not knowledge. They say that dreams are when one's imagination is at its peak, and that dreams hold bundles of wisdom. And the Aranara says that when one dreams or hibernates, one's memories can be found and kept as a seed and will be remembered once more, which leads us to the Ermin Soul Sickness. Now, my headcanon regarding the Ermin Soul Sickness was the memory of Ruka Devara's death being so prevalent to the academia that it affects the Akasha and therefore the Ermin Soul Tree negatively. But based on what Ara Karman says, the Marana came when the cataclysm occurred and the abyssal creatures tainted the land of Sumeru. So Marana is basically the madness or frenzy caused by the abyss. And that same frenzy that Mikoshichio had is what caused the withering phenomenon within Sumeru. Because remember, Ruka Devara saved the rainforest by possibly taking all of the abyss goo and sacrificing herself to remove it. Sadly, however, her sacrifice left a memory of the abyss within the Ermin Sol after Ruka Devara's death. Hence why Kusanali says that Ruka Devara's last words are contaminated within the Ermin Sol tree. But whether or not dreams being used by the academia affects the tree negatively is still unclear. To me, altering dreams and creating samsara is more of a problem for the people than it is for the Ermin Sol tree itself. Dunya Zed's consciousness wasn't able to hold out and her mental state couldn't take any more of the samsara and woke up from the dream, but has also affected her Eliot are quite badly because she was no longer kept in check. Similar fates can occur with the people of Sumeru since dreams are often not remembered, but the mental fatigue will end up draining the entirety of Sumeru if not regulated properly. However, the fact that Rukan Devara's memories are contaminated with Marana because she sacrificed herself to save the rainforest 500 years ago is the reason why Erminsol is sick and the withering keep popping up even more frequently. And the way to cure this disease, as well as the end of Sumeru's story however, I can only speculate will be found within the memories of Ruka Devaras that are locked up in Erminsol. And Kusanali's life's mission, to decipher Ruka Devaras' last words, might be the key to saving those remaining memories. But time is running out, and her memories are slowly deteriorating due to the contamination from the Abyss's sanity draining frenzy. One can only hope that we can recover at least some of Ruka Devara's memories at the end of Sumeru's story. But you know how Hoyo is, right? And there you have it. How dreams work in Sumeru as well as how powerful, relevant, and crucial dreams are to the people of Sumeru, the Aranara, and the Dendro Archon. Comment below what you guys think of dreams and how they relate to everything we know about Sumeru, about the Golden Apple Archipelago, and even how you think it would impact the end of Sumeru's story. This is essentially my understanding of how dreams work and how Aranara and the Dendro Archon view dreams because I genuinely just enjoy the concept of 
of Dreams along with old world videos. Just a heads up though, you might be seeing more dream videos for now because I honestly think everything about Sumeru is locked behind dreams and memories just tucked away in the rainforest. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for those videos. Now I suggest that you guys read more about Aranara lore because a lot of how the main story might end, specifically about Kusanali and Ruka Devata, is hidden all over Aranara's dialogues. Just be sure to bring your Aranara dictionary while you do though. <laughs> Uh, R, R language. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that bell icon to stay up to date with my videos or streams. And if you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials I'll link down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!